what's in my eyepiece case? Now, if you saw my previous video on the only two eyepieces I ever use, that information is still valid. Those two eyepieces being the Teleview 27mm Pan Optic and the 13mm Nagler, either version. While that is still true, I carry more stuff than that. I just tend to use those eyepieces more often. So let's take a peek inside my eyepiece case and see what's there. And I'm going to give you three scenarios based on the three most common rigs that I take out. So while that base eyepiece case does stay with me at all times, the accessories around them tend to change a little bit. So let's take a look. So the first scenario, and by far the most common, is if I take out a mid-aperture Dobsonian reflector. A 6-inch, an 8-inch, or a 10-inch. Those of you who know me well know that I have been recommending a mid-aperture Dob as the best first telescope for beginners for the past 25 years or so, and I don't see any reason to change. So let's take a look at what's inside the base eyepiece case. This is the eyepiece case I normally have with me. It says Zoomel on it, but I've seen this with all sorts of different kinds of names stenciled on it. And the only thing I have in the upper compartment, by the way, is this Teleview inch and a quarter dielectric diagonal. Everything else is down here. So let's go ahead and open this up and take a look. And you'll notice it's pretty sparse. I mean, there's not a lot here, and this is done on purpose. When you have too much stuff, you tend to sit there and stare at it and wonder what you should take out. When your options are limited, you'd spend a lot less time just worrying about that. Those of you who know me well know my two favorite eyepieces are the Teleview 27mm Panoptic and the 13mm Nagler. This is the bulky Type 1. I probably should replace that with the newer Type 6, which is much smaller, just to save some weight. This is a laser max laser collimator. And I can remember back in the day, there was a huge debate I had as to whether I wanted to spend $300 on a laser collimator. But I'd seen my friends use this thing and it's so intuitive, you almost don't even have to know how to collimate a Newtonian. All you have to do is line up the bullseye patterns and the shadows, and the rest just kind of takes care of itself. So, yes, I spent a lot of time on this, but over the years, it's really saved me a lot of time collimating Newtonians, and perhaps even more importantly, I've helped other people collimate their telescopes as well. 9mm Nagler Type 1. I should, again, probably upgrade to the newer one, which is much smaller and saves some weight. Teleview 2X Barlow, and then I have three Plossels. This is the 32, and my all-time favorite, the Teleview 25, and the 20. This one doesn't get used very often. I have a two inch to inch and a quarter adapter, and I have the other adapter. This is the 0.965 to inch and a quarter, and the reason I have this is because, of course, if you do this long enough, somebody is going to come up to you with a junk telescope and say, I can't figure out how to use this thing. What am I doing wrong? Well, this thing at least gives you a fighting chance because you can use the normal inch and a quarter eyepieces. Up in the corner here, there's the Teleview Zoom. It's the 8 to 24. This is really just a brand labeled Vixen product. I don't like Zoom eyepieces. I've said this before, and I don't particularly like this one either, but uh, I've just kind of had it around. It just sort of inhabits this upper left-hand corner of the eyepiece case. Okay, so if you've been doing this for a while, this probably doesn't look all that unusual to you. If you are a beginner, this may seem sparse, and in particular, there are two items that I don't have in here. What are they? Well, the first one is I don't have any high-power eyepieces here they don't get used. The shortest focal length I have is the 9. The second thing that I don't have in here, I don't have any filters. I don't use any filters whatsoever. I think they're all a waste of time. That's a topic for another time. The only filter I think that most people should ever consider buying is the O3. That's the one that lets you see the veil 
It is also useful on the ring, the dumbbell, the Orion Nebula, and some other things. But you don't have to rush out and buy that thing, and I usually don't even carry it with me. If you are a beginner, the one thing you really want to stay away from are those silly colored filters that everybody winds up buying. They don't do anything except ruin the view. And no matter how many times I say that, it doesn't make any difference whatsoever. Beginners go out and buy those things, and then they sit in those little square boxes all in a row at the back of your eyepiece case, and it reaches the point where you just don't even see them anymore. You just kind of reach past them. Well, I would suggest if you have a box set of those silly colored filters, get them out of your eyepiece case and use the real estate for something more useful. But that's pretty much it, folks. If you see me out there, this is probably what I'm going to have with me, and the eyepiece case is probably going to be configured something pretty close to this. So there is one minor variation here. If I wind up taking out the X-T6, this is the 6-inch Dobsonian, you'll notice it does not have a 2-inch focuser, so the two eyepieces that I showed you won't fit. That's okay because you can sort of slide down the line and get an eyepiece that does, in fact, fit. So in other words, instead of the 27mm Teleview Panoptic, I will get that slightly smaller brother, the 24mm Panoptic. The views between those two eyepieces are surprisingly similar, and in fact, you can get away with the 24 without having to spend the money for the 27 if you wanted to save yourself a little bit of money. As for the 13 millimeter Nagler, well, the new version is inch and a quarter, so I have one of those and I take that, and the views are very similar between the two rigs. So the next scenario here is a Schmidt Cassegrain, and I have three of them here. This is a C6 on an X-Star mount. That is an 8-inch LX200, and that is a 12-inch LX200. The 12-inch doesn't get used very often. It's just too big. So again, the eyepiece case that I will take is the same as the one that you saw before, but I'll add a couple of little wrinkles here. And those of you who do own Schmidt Cassegrains know what I'm about to say you don't have to have really fancy eyepieces. The reason being, at F10, these things are extremely tolerant, and you can actually get away with something cheap. I have this Orion Deep View 28 millimeter eyepiece here, and I've got something very similar, a Celestron Elux 26. It wouldn't surprise me if these were very similar, if not identical eyepieces. They're Kellner type designs, and those are fine at F10. It doesn't have to cope with a very steep light cone and have to correct for all of this. So in other words, it's ironic. Despite the fact that this is arguably the most complex rig that I'll take out, I actually use the simplest eyepieces for it. And the reason I'll take a Schmidt Cassegrain is usually because it's a star party situation and there's going to be kids around. These things do track. I can have a computer that make it go to places and I don't have to keep pushing it along every two to three minutes. That can get in the way of the flow of a star party. So one other thing that I'll take with me on a Schmidt Cassegrain is one of these. It's a webcam lunar planetary imager and this takes the place of an eyepiece. This is the color version. I also have the monochrome. If I'm going to be doing the moon, I'll use the monochrome, and the color is going to be used on the planets. So because it does take the place of the eyepiece, you can't look through the telescope at the same time, but it doesn't matter because I'll have a laptop open that's showing a live view of whatever it is I happen to be looking at. And here's a hint, folks. While the public is ooing and eyeing over the view of Saturn or the moon on your laptop, you can surreptitiously take captures of the video and process them afterwards. So this can do double duty, both as a public outreach device and to get some data that you can process for astrophotos later on. And the last scenario is if I take a good refractor with me on a tracking equatorial mount. Now, usually if I take a refractor, there's a couple of reasons why. Number one, if it's a sky watch and the moon is up, I know I'm not going to be doing a lot of deep sky observing, so aperture becomes less important. The other reason is if I think astrophotography might be in the cards either before or after the sky watch or sometimes even during, I'll take the refractor. In fact, sometimes, I'll take the refractor and the 8-inch daub together. I'll use the 8-inch daub for observing at the star party, and I'll have this thing working on the side, taking images for me to process later. 
So despite the fact that this is by far the smallest aperture of anything I've shown you today, ironically, I'll take the most amount of stuff with me. <laughs> Everything you've seen me mention so far, I will take with me in addition to some other stuff. So in other words, I'll take the webcam lunar planetary imagers with me. Yes, these are most commonly used on schmidt cassegrain grains, but they do work on nice refractors as well. You're seeing the top of this white case here. I have three drawers full of stuff, including some star party eyepieces I have just rolling around here, giving the refractors their sometimes well-deserved reputations as being divas. Yeah, their owners can be the same way too. So there is one other piece of equipment that I do take with me, but I've hesitated to mention it now because they're starting to become a little bit controversial. And that is this, it's a green laser pointer. This one was given to me by Howie Gladder. He's passed away. I miss Howie, he was a real character. But these can be helpful for pointing out constellations in the sky. And if you're doing a sky watch, sometimes I'll even just take this and I can teach a lot of people at the same time without waiting for people to look through the eyepiece. So these have become controversial because people, some people, overuse them. So when you're out there on a beautiful, clear, dark night, you'll start seeing lots of green beams crisscrossing the sky and making all sorts of weird patterns. Yes, it, there, it may come a point where some star parties may start to ban these things. I've heard of that happening. So yes, if you do take one of these, and I do, please do use it responsibly. So there you have it, folks, a look at what's inside my eyepiece case. I hope this information has helped you to decide what to take with you when you go out observing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.